Hi everyone, my name is Leonardo Ventura, and today I'm going to present you the paper I co-authored titled Measuring and Modeling Software Vulnerability Security Advisory Platforms, which is a fruit of a joint research project between the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro, where I'm an undergraduate researcher, and Siemens. So, we first want to give you a little background of what problem we're trying to tackle and what risk-aware patch management is. Software vulnerabilities are everywhere and they are disclosed on a daily basis. And to solve that problem, vendors usually try to release a patch for a vulnerability as soon as they can. But only the vendor releasing a fix for a vulnerability is just not enough. Most of the time, their clients are not only responsible for applying a patch, but also knowing when that should be applied, uh, which is just not trivial. Patching can cause system outages or reboot, and patching usually means downtime, and to some systems, that downtime may be critical, so they have to decide whether to patch or not. The question then is, to which extent the risk of delaying a patch is still worth it, and what is the risk associated with deferring a patch. There are cases, such as the WannaCry attack, where a vulnerability that had received a patch four months prior was exploited by a wormable ransomware impacting systems worldwide. So, knowing when to patch is incredibly important. Having that in mind, uh, risk aware patch management is just the concept of taking the risk into consideration to decide when to apply a patch. There already are products in the market supporting uh, risk aware patch management, such as the Siemens Industrial Vulnerability Manager, also known as IVM. But we also have to understand how risk evolves in order to have a proper approach to risk-aware patch management. There is an enormous amount of information on the internet about vulnerabilities, and there are hundreds of advisories about these vulnerabilities released every day. But unfortunately for us, most of this information is not well structured, and information also usually comes from different sources at different times, so deciding where, when, and how to look for this information is challenging. And our goal and contribution here is to provide measurements and models to support risk-aware patch management by using temporal information about software vulnerability events and also to provide insights into how information about vulnerabilities flows across security platforms. So now we're going to explain how we collect and store our data. Starting with the platforms, we needed to choose a reference platform and for that we chose NVD due to it being one of the largest databases of vulnerabilities publicly available. In order to select which other platforms we would collect information from, we decided to rank platforms based on how many unique CVEs NVD references them. So if a platform is referenced 30 times by one single vulnerability entry on NVD and the other is referenced one time by 30 different vulnerabilities, the second would rank higher. And with that ranking, now we had to extract the actual information we wanted from these platforms, which is the date they released information about that vulnerability. Since there was no API available for, for most of these platforms, we had to parse them in order to extract that information from their page. The workflow is shown on the figure here. On the left, we have the sources of information in yellow. They're mostly websites. In the middle, you can see the module to update the database, which is what we use to collect and store data periodically. And on the right, we have this blue cube representing our final curated database, where we can query what we collect. 
Now we are going to show you some of the findings of our work. Here you can see a Sunkey diagram. It shows the flow of advisories between platforms. In order to produce it, we consider the sequence of platforms that published advisories for a given vulnerability. So for example, if an advisory is first found on Security Focus, then on NVT and then on Debian, you would see going from Security Focus on layer one, then to NVD on layer two, and then to Debian on layer three. On the diagram, the, the width of the lines between platforms is proportional to the flow rate between them. So for example, the width between Security Focus and NVD uh, is proportional to the number of advisories flowing between them, which in this case is more than 49,000 advisories. We could also go on to see how this advisories flows to layer 10, for example, but we stopped at layer 3 here. By looking at the diagram, we can also draw some conclusions about how some platforms behave. Uh, NVD, for example, acts as an aggregator, as we can see by looking at its width on layers 2 and 3, being larger than its width on layer 1. Security Focus, on the other hand, acts as a publisher, or as we call it, a source, as we can see by its width on the first layer being larger than on layers 2 and 3. Other platforms, such as KBCERT, uh, act as a mix of aggregator and source. Now, this plot shows how publication rates vary across different platforms. On the x-axis, we have the platforms, while on the y-axis, we have the average amount of advisories released per day. And analyzing the plot, the blue bar shows how many advisories are released per day on that platform and the orange one shows how many it published as the first source. This shows that MVD, while publishing the most, rarely publishes a novel advisory, while on the other hand IBM doesn't publish as much but it has a much higher average of newly published advisories. Now we show you the platform delays, which is the number of days that an advisory takes to go from platform A to platform B. Basically, it is the difference between the day an advisory was published on A and the day an advisory was published on B. On the plot, once again, the platforms are on the x-axis, but on the y-axis we have the number of days. The blue bar represents the average for each platform delay and by analyzing it we see that the average suggests that it may take months for each platform to relay information. But then when taking the median we see that for most cases this may actually not be entirely true because the median is way smaller than the average, meaning that we have some outliers increasing the average. This can also, also be seen by the large standard deviation shown here. We can conclude then that even though the average of the delays for each platform is quite high, most of the delays are in the order of weeks and not months. So in general, platforms take around 30 days to relay information but sometimes it could also take even more than a year, as we've seen with the outliers. In the next finding, we analyze relative days between disclosure at a given platform versus the disclosure on NVD. So we compute the disclosure date on NVD minus the disclosure date at a platform. This means that when the difference results in a positive number, the platform disclosure date is older than NVD's and conversely when the difference is negative NVD's disclosure date is older. For example, uh, if an advisory is published by Bugzilla in April 1st and another one about the same vulnerability is only published by NVD in May 1st, the difference would be 
30 days, a positive number. Looking at the plot, we can see that on average, most platforms disclose information before NVD, but there are also some where NVD prevails. This suggests again that NVD acts as an aggregator where some platforms ingest information from. But the high standard deviation here is a challenge when trying to predict these differences. Then we went on augmenting the Sankey diagram with delayed data. Here we highlight some of the differences between the Sankey and our new approach, the queuing network. And on one hand, the Sankey diagram is fairly easy to understand and visualize and also gives us a good sense of how advisories flow between platforms while also capturing the routing of these advisories but it does not capture the delays. On the other hand, the queuing network, it is difficult to visualize, but it has the advantage of capturing both routing and delay information, allowing us to produce our metrics of interest, such as the mean time between platform delays. And then we dive into the analytical model and first we asked ourselves how we could extract metrics from the Sankey diagram and our main idea was to derive a queuing network by using the Sankey and the delay information. Just to clarify here, uh, a queuing network is a model where you have different queues and different customers and the customers are served after the service time of the queues and in our case, using the simplest setting of this model, we define queues as platforms, customers as advisories, and routing of these customers as the routing of advisories between platforms. So our advisories acting as customers are served after some delay corresponding to the service time of these queues. And there's one queue for each platform. In order to get to that model, we start with our input parameters. First, we have a set of platforms where each platform releases security advisories that are routed across other platforms. Then we use the routing matrix derived from the Sankey diagram, where each entry indicates the probability that an advisory published at a source platform will be followed by a release of another advisory at the target platform. For example, uh, an advisory published by Mark has a 46.6% chance of being followed by an advisory published by NVD. Uh, this also highlights the role of NVD as an aggregator on the second layer of the Sankey diagram. Then we also use the delay per platform information. And finally, we get the network of queues, which outputs, for example, platform publishing rates, hitting and absorption probabilities, and mean time between platforms, and so on. Note that while the delay per platform is an input parameter of the model, the delay across platforms accounting for the relaying of advisories across multiple platforms can be obtained as an output metric from the model. And now I'll show you the evaluation and some of the, some of the insights of the model. First, we start with the evaluation of platform delays. And for each element in this matrix, we can see the mean time between platforms measured in days. So from the model, we see that most platforms take on average one month to be reached which means that they usually take 30 days to publish an, uh, an advisory about a vulnerability after uh, a first uh, advisory about that vulnerability was published. But there are some platforms where this delay could be even larger, reaching more than three months on average, such as Bugzilla, OpenWall, and GitHub. And as we can see here, this fits perfectly with what we have in the actual data. 
then we move on to the platform hitting probabilities. Here we consider security tracker, security focus and NVD as target platforms. And the figure indicates that advisories initially published by most platforms will reach NVD with high probability, further evidencing NVD as an aggregator. So the usual life cycle of an advisory uh, is to first appear at a source platform, then arrive at NVD, and then go on to a target platform uh, ingesting that information from NVD, giving us that hourglass shape which we highlighted here. So to conclude, in this work we present measurements and models to characterize the flow of information between security advisory platforms. Our measurements allow us to classify platforms as sources, aggregators or sinks regarding their role in this flow. For example, we learned that NVD acts as an aggregator as most of the information that flows through NVD has its origin at different platforms. Then we propose the use of a network of queues to generalize the results obtained from our measurements and to track the flow of advisories. The model also enabled us to predict the way information would flow in alternative scenarios. Both our measurements and models suggest that delays are typically on the order of three months, but it may grow to the order of years. As our contribution, we believe this work opens up many avenues for future research. We are currently investigating the use of the measurements and models presented in this work to support risk-aware patch management. And in particular, there is a lot of missing data in our measurements and the queuing model can be instrumental to fill this gap as it encodes information about the flow of advisories in a convenient and compact way.